So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and Apple released iPadOS 15.2 Beta 3 about two weeks ago now and I've been using it ever since. So in this video what I want to do is do another follow up video, we're going to dive right back in into those new features again, but then also talk about some of the gripes that I've had with iPadOS 15.2 Beta 3 because there are a couple and there's some things happening in a negative way to the iPad which I haven't really dealt with before at all during my last two and a half years in the beta program with iPad Pros, at least from the 2018 to the 2021 iPad Pros. So without further ado, let's get into it. Leave some comments below if you guys are on this beta program. If you're not, which update are you guys on and how's your iPad reacting? Whether it is an iPad Pro, iPad Air, Mini, the regular, whatever you guys have, love to hear it in the comments below. But let's get into it. Okay everybody, so let's hop right into the video. And the first thing I do like to show every single time is exactly what version I'm on. So we go into the about section, go to the software version. We're on 15.2 and we have 19C5044B. So again, that means we're probably getting closer and closer. And don't be surprised if we get the beta four variant tomorrow because what Apple did was they actually took a week off because of the Thanksgiving break, which is pretty normal this time of year when it comes to Apple's update thresholds and how often they do update. But again, we're probably gonna see the beta four update coming early this week, so keep that in mind. And I did wanna highlight some of the features that I didn't mention before, the main one being this new Apple Music playlist situation. So before, if you're an Apple Music subscriber, which I'm personally not, but you obviously have the ability to create playlists, whether you are a subscriber or you're not, but now we have the ability to search within that playlist. So apparently this search bar was not available when you first created playlists, but now you can actually search by genre, search by artist, search by music name, search by song name, all within that one playlist that you created. So if you have a playlist with over like 100 songs and it's hard to just sc scroll through, but you know that you have something in there, you can easily search it. The next thing is actually inside of the settings. And if you have a cellular iPad, you can actually check inside of your cellular settings. But if you don't, you can actually just check inside of your Wi-Fi settings. So if you go into the little I in your Wi-Fi settings, you now have the ability to limit IP address tracking. Now this feature was actually there before, but the naming was a little bit different. So I think it had to do with private relay. That's what it was named before. But again, it's just a way to limit IP address tracking by hiding your IP address from known trackers inside the native mail application inside of Safari. So those are the only two instances that this is gonna work by default. Other than that, you might have to get a VPN, but I think it's kind of like a built-in VPN for native applications. So I absolutely love this. I always leave this on because I don't wanna be tracked and I'm trying to limit that as much as possible. The next feature has to do with the Find My application. So if you guys do recall, with Beta 2, we actually had a second option over here, which allowed you to identify items that were around you, but that weren't placed there by you. So I don't know why Apple removed that with Beta 3. Maybe it was a feature that wasn't ready to go yet. But again, Apple removed it. So now all you have to do is identify Find Item. That is the one that is actually working. So it just lets you identify found items in your area. But again, like I said, before with Beta 3, we actually had the ability to search for Apple trackers or any trackers, therefore, that were around you that maybe somebody placed underneath your bicycle or in, underneath your car, and it would like ping that to then let you know like, hey, somebody put something there that's not supposed to be there, you might wanna take a look. So in terms of updates, that's all that we really got with Beta 3, and overall, the performance with those updates have been great. So you can see that everything is still very snappy, Everything opens pretty quickly. You can still go into your multitasking. So if I go do one of these, and let's say I grab maybe a Safari, I can just hold it over. So actual multitasking and overall performance is strong. So I do like the fact that the performance hasn't really gotten worse. Where I've seen some issues, right? For instance, with Twitter, I've been kicked out of Twitter without actually logging out, which is kind of annoying to deal with. So Twitter does like auto log you out, and that has to be a feature within iPadOS, or not a feature, a actual bug that logs you out of Twitter which is pretty annoying. So that's one thing that I have noticed. And then another thing is issues actually with my Magic Keyboard. So I don't know if it's an app issue or maybe a physical Magic Keyboard issue because I don't think it's a physical Magic Keyboard issue. This, this one is relatively new. Remember, if you guys do follow the channel, I exchanged my old Magic Keyboard for a new one because that one started messing up. But again, where I've been dealing with this issue is actually inside of LumaFusion. So the delete button on the Magic Keyboard doesn't really work and it only works when it wants to. Like I usually have to quit out of the application and go back into it. There's no data loss or anything, but it does reignite that button, physical button. But again, this is issues that we're dealing with in terms of connectivity, maybe to the Magic Keyboard. It's definitely a software bug and it has nothing to do with the physical Magic Keyboard. And then let me know in the comments down below if you guys have a Magic Keyboard and are having any issues with it. And then if we continue with that LumaFusion situation, my iPad is actually getting hot now while using LumaFusion. I have not changed the type of files that I'm using. 
I still record in 4K 30. I don't have that much stuff on my timeline, but I have noticed that after editing for a decent amount of time, LumaFusion does get warm. And you guys can see, I don't do anything too crazy, right? It's a soundtrack on the bottom, maybe some overlay footage, but overall, it's very, very simple and very straightforward in terms of an editing standpoint. So can you imagine if I have like six, seven, eight layers, maybe with 8K or 6K in terms of resolution, those type of file sizes, maybe it would get a little bit warmer. From a performance standpoint, it hasn't hindered the performance, but I do feel the iPad getting really, really warm and the battery getting drained immediately. Now, lastly, let's go into the actual battery settings because I do like to show off exactly how we're doing with battery. But if we go into the battery, the iPad didn't get much use over the last couple of days. But if we go on some of these other days where there was a lot of use, let's go on a day like Monday. So we had five hours and 14 minutes of screen on time. LumaFusion took up about 43% of that. If you click on that, that was about an hour and a half of usage. So again, LumaFusion is draining the battery at a faster rate. But again, you can see that 75% battery was used up in total with five hours and 14 minutes, which means I probably could have gotten maybe six to seven hours squeezed out of there. But then on a day like Tuesday, three, three and a half hours of screen on time with a little over 75% use. YouTube, an hour and a half took up 61%. LumaFusion, hour and 10 minutes took up 14%. So again, it depends on how big your files are inside of LumaFusion to see how much battery drainage is actually happening. And then let's see on a day like Saturday where Again, my battery usage was at 100% and only four hours of screen on time. Most of that was a YouTube TV. So I only got two hours of YouTube TV and that took up 70% of my battery. PS Remote Play, about an hour, took up 18 to 20%. So overall, I just think battery needs to get better and I don't know what Apple's doing in the back end to make the battery so much worse. And I'm not a believer that because of the fact that I'm in a beta program, I should be okay with battery not playing that well. But again, if I'm a developer and I'm testing out certain features and testing out my applications, I gotta see what it's doing to the battery life overall. So an excuse that I'm on the beta program to tell me that the battery life isn't doing that well or it's okay that it's not doing that well, then again, I don't think that's an excuse worth going home to. But that's what we got with battery life overall. So hopefully Apple does make some updates with beta four, but obviously it will have a video with beta four the moment it comes out. So stay subscribed. So as you guys saw with the video, we did get some new features with this iPad OS beta three update. There weren't too many tangible differences and nothing that's gonna help your efficiency, aside from maybe like searching for music inside of your Apple Music playlist. But again, when it comes to the negatives, it's just getting a little bit kind of, a little bit crazy. So I'm wondering what Apple's doing in the back end. Are they just kind of forgetting about iPads in general and focusing on iOS versus iPad OS? Because again, with iPad OS 15.2 beta 3, we're losing battery life. We're starting to get warm while using intensive tasks like LumaFusion, which is something that I've never actually dealt with when it came to the actual iPad Pro, especially this M1 iPad Pro, which is supposed to be very battery efficient and cooling efficient. But again, that's just some of the things that I'm personally dealing with. Leave some comments down below, like I said in the beginning of the video, to see exactly what you guys are dealing with with your iPads and let me know which iPad you're using, just so I can get a general senses of what's going on with the iPads. And also, there seems to be a lot of engagement inside of the community post, so I'm gonna do a few more of those and leave some comments in that community post as well to let me know exactly what's going on with your iPad experience and with iPadOS, whether it is the public 15.1.1 or the betas in the 15.2 beta 3. But that's gonna do for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, everybody, peace.